What does a contraction feel like? How do I know if I'm in labor? And what does the day of labor look like? Wait, is this normal? Hey, I'm Heidi. My best friends call me Hydes. I'm a certified birth doula, host of this podcast, and author of Birth Story, an interactive pregnancy guidebook. I have supported hundreds of women through their labor and deliveries, and I believe every one of them and you deserves a microphone and a stage. So here we are. Listen each week to get answers to these tough questions. Birth Story, where we talk about pregnancy, labor, deliveries, where we tell our stories and share our feelings. And of course, chat about our favorite baby products and motherhood. And because I'm passionate about birth outcomes, you will hear from some of the top experts in labor and delivery. Whether you are pregnant, trying desperately to get pregnant, or you just love a good birth story, I hope you will stick around and be part of this birth story family. Thank you for listening to the Birth Story Podcast. If you are tuning in for the first time, I want to encourage you to start at the beginning I want you to go on a journey with me and allow me to be your virtual doula and teach you all the things along the way. So I'm just going to give you a couple highlights of some of the earlier podcast episodes if you are just now tuning in. So very first episode, episode one, you can learn all about me, who I am, why I became a doula, why it is I do what I do, and also my very own birth story with my second child, Jagger. Then I've interviewed some really cool CEOs. So episode three, Tori Jones is the CEO of Eshell Triangle, and she was also featured on Rachel Hollis's The Rise podcast. Episode seven was Rachel Coley, the CEO of Can Do Kiddo. She was just on Good Morning America. She's an incredible occupational therapist that teaches you how to play with your baby, and her birth stories are incredible. Episode 10 was one of my best friends, Amy, who had a VBAC in the car. We have done episodes on micro preemies, episode 18, 21 on international adoption out of Uganda, 24 and 25. Oh, those episodes like get a box of tissues. They're on surrogacy and cancer. We've addressed hypnobirthing, fertility, really easy, joyful, uh, medicated births, really hard, long labors, medicated, unmedicated, everything in between. So I hope you'll start at the beginning. Let the Birth Story podcast take you on a journey all the way through and enjoy this episode. And then remember to rewind all the way back to episode one. Thanks for tuning in. Episode steamy chick, Kelly Garza. If you guys are not following her on Instagram or you do not know what vaginal steaming is because you've never heard of Gwyneth Paltrow, well, maybe you'll learn about it on the Birth Story podcast today. So in this episode, I'm interviewing Kelly Garza, the CEO and the founder of Steamy Chick, a booming vaginal steaming company. And we're going to get really intimate. And you're going to hear way more about my vagina and my period than you would probably like to know. But my goal is that you learn about vaginal steaming, you learn about the benefits of it, and kind of like the process of what it's like to have a consultation. So I am being really vulnerable today, and I let Kelly Garza give me a consultation, and I'm airing it for all to hear. And a welcome (laughs) to the Birth Story Podcast. I don't know if you remember, like I sent you a message in November, but I found you... Like, I feel like I'm so behind the times, Kelly, because I'm laying in this like hotel room with my best friend, Amy, and she's like, are you following Steamy Chick? She's like, are you are you doing the vaginal steaming? And I'm like, I've been a doula for 15 years and I'm like, what is vaginal steaming? And so we sat there for like hours just digging through your Instagram and just so fascinated And then I'm thinking, okay, well, number one, you have to be on my podcast. But number two, how can I get this? How can I deliver it to all of my clients? I mean, I just was like, let's just start with this interview and see where we go. Because I have so much to learn. And hopefully there's some people out there like me that 
are like, what is vaginal steaming? And are going to stick around for this whole podcast so that they can learn. And hopefully we can all buy some things from you at the end of this. And we can all like, you know, post Instagram pictures of us doing our vaginal steams. <laughs> awesome. Okay, wait a minute. You're telling me that as of yet, your vagina has never been steamed. I know my vagina has never been steamed. What is that called? Is it, a, is it, is that make my vagina a virgin again? I mean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a virgin <laughs> vaginal steamer, but it's coming. Yes, for you and anybody else who has never steamed before, it is. Um, I think the first thing to address is that it's not painful. I don't know who got this idea and <laughs> spread this rumor that it's painful, but it's not. It's not painful, and it's also not supposed to be very hot. So I explain it like when you take a shower, the temperature doesn't have to be scalding hot. And if it is, then you should turn it down. Do you know what I mean? Then the shower was too hot. Like there's no, like, it's not like you get clean because it's scalding and you don't get clean because it's lukewarm. You know what I mean? So that's how vaginal steaming is. It works at all different temperatures as long as you've generated the steam. So it should be a comfortable temperature and it actually feels really soothing. Like, like I describe it for myself after I did my first vaginal steam, I was like, I kind of feel like I had a bath for the first time, but it was my vagina. You know, like if your vagina had never had a bath, like it was just like, ah, you know, and it feels very natural. Like there's nothing that feels like you're forcing it. It's not like going to the dentist and, you know, <laughs> just getting a feeling. Or like something. it's something supposed to be happening, right? It's just really natural. It just feels really normal. And like, I think, a lot of times people are just like, oh my gosh, how come I haven't been doing this my whole life? You know, that's just kind of it's like brushing your teeth. Like it's just, it feels really natural, like something that you should do. <laughs> so. Right. I mean, I was thinking about it and I was thinking I have all of these extra places and tools that I have for like cleaning my face or cleaning my underarms or like, you know, like my teeth and different things. And I don't have like different types of things for my, and I use the word yoni, that's like in our families, but we can use vagina, but yoni, vagina, hoo-ha, I don't even know what your favorite vagina word is for a vaginal steaming. But I was thinking today, and you want to know how this came up, Kelly, is I have a, a facial steamer that I use like about once or twice a week to just kind of like open my pores and make my face refreshed. Right. As I age. And I was thinking, well, this is a perfectly comfortable temperature. I didn't try it, but it was very <laughs> tempting. I was like, maybe I should just, you know, take it from the face and steam the vagina. But I didn't do that because I thought I'm going to talk to Kelly. She's going to give yeah. me the right herbs and we're going to yeah. go through the process correctly to get a prescription on exactly like what my body is needing. And so I want to dig into that because I know you have this whole huge business I want to tell everybody about and how it's so much more than just the concept of vaginal steaming. Like you, what you do has data behind it. It's very prescriptive. You have to get to know your clients very well. But first, let's push pause and tell me like, and everyone that's listening, who who are you, Kelly? Where do you live? What's your life like? And how in the world did you get into owning and starting the largest vaginal steaming supply company in the United States? Okay, okay, okay. I could do that. So I am California-based. Uh, my name is Kelly Garza. And I am the mom of two little girls. They're age four and six. I also have a husband and a puppy. <laughs> so, you know, just a mom like everybody else. <laughs> and I had learned about vaginal steaming before I became a mom. I learned about it in 2011 from Mayan abdominal womb healer named Marcia Lopez. And so I had heard her talk about it at a workshop. And she was specifically talking about it within the context of people who had painful periods. And since I didn't have painful periods, it didn't occur to me to ever try it. But within the next year, I had a missing period. And with that missing period, I felt like my hormones were raging and I felt like I was really out of control. And so for the first time in my life, I had had missing periods throughout my life. It never bothered me, <laughs> but I wasn't pregnant. And my hormones were raging. And so I was like, how am I going to get to feeling like myself again? I asked myself. And then I was like, 
oh, I realized, you know what? Maybe this has something to do with my period not being here. It was been absent for like probably like two months. Like maybe it has something to do with my missing period. And then I thought, I wonder if my period comes back, if my hormones would go back into balance. And so I figured that made sense. And so I was like, well, then how the heck do I get my period to come back? And I went to sleep with that thought. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I get all my best ideas when I'm asleep and I woke up and I was like, vaginal steaming. I need to try that. And so to make a long story short, I found a Korean th- uh, spa that offered vaginal steaming in Los Angeles. And I went and I did a vaginal steam. I drove home. I went to sleep that evening and my period started. So I was convinced it definitely seemed like the vaginal steaming had brought back my period. And when my period arrived, it was very different in quality than it had been before. Customarily, I had brown kind of sluggish periods. And this period was bright red and it smelled, I want to say fresher than it ever had before. Wow. So it was that quick? Your very first one. Okay. My favorite is when it works that quick. You know, some people yeah. steam and, and they have a problem and very quickly it resolves. And then some people it takes longer. Okay. <laughs> but I forgot that. Um, and so my favorite is when it happens e- immediately. <laughs> you know, that's, that's obviously my favorite and everybody's favorite. But some people, they, you know, if they're working to get rid of a sluggish brown period, for example, they may need to steam for two or three months in a row. Okay. Um, to be able to get those results. But so I had, so I had steamed, I had this experience with it. And then if you fast forward, I think three or four years later, I was pregnant with my first baby. And as all moms are in, I was in a Facebook group <laughs> full of other pregnant women. Getting and, all of our advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And all of a sudden they started, one of them said, have you guys ever heard of Yoni steaming? And so then there was a conversation between um, this woman and two other women in the group who were from Haiti and Ghana. Okay. So now we're getting very international. And we were like, we've done vaginal steaming. That's what we do customarily. You know, we'll be steaming after giving birth. And the Haitian woman was sharing how it's done there. The Ghanaian woman was sharing how it was done. And it was all really fascinating to me because I had never told anybody that I had ever done a vaginal steam. Like I had never even told told anybody. And after I ever since that practice that uh, I did it at the Korean spa, I started to do it every month, but I created my own vaginal steam sauna at home because I did not like doing it in public. Like, you know, it, like I wanted to do it more in the privacy of my own home. So I had now done it for three or four years without telling anybody. So even on this, this Facebook conversation, I didn't really say anything. I don't even think I said anything, <laughs> but I was just like, wow. That's so interesting. Now at home in those couple of years, were you just doing actual steam or were you already incorporating herbs that were, you know, suggested to you from your original steam? No, I wasn't using like herbal knowledge in the way that you're mentioning. I myself work with a couple herbs, you know, where I live, white sage grows. And I, you know, it was a, it was an herb that I used in my household for like making tea and different things like that. So I would just steam with the herbs that I knew and that were familiar to me in my household. Okay. So white sage was one of them. Okay. But more um, you were looking at the benefits of the actual steam at first. You know, well, what I, the Korean spa owner told me that Korean women steam at least once a month at the end of their period in order to just to make sure that all the rest of the menses comes out. And I was like, okay. And she specifically said that it's a preventative practice that is why that helps to prevent people from cancer and, you know, having any problems. Her English wasn't great, but that, that much was communicated to me. And I was like, well, that makes sense because, you know, who has health insurance? these days? (laughs) I'd be like, I'm in reduction. I definitely did. Okay. Exactly. I was like, well, you know, and then, but this is when I'm just doing the steam and talking to her, which, which also I was, I didn't really want to talk to anybody when I was steaming, you know, it was a little bit, I was a little out of my comfort zone. So anyway, so then when I, when my period came back that night, I was like, wow, this was really effective. And my period is so much better. I could see that it's a preventative practice. So I just did it once a month and I I would use, I I think I just used white sage, honestly, that whole time. And at Um, this point, did you purchase a steamer or, or like the seat or did you make your own? Heidi, I went home and I, 
looked at this chair and I took the seat off of that chair. <laughs> I ripped the seat off of that chair. And then I, um, I drilled a toilet seat to that chair. And that's how I steamed at home at first. Oh my gosh. I I love you. This is like how all great entrepreneurs begin. You need to be on Guy Raz's How I Built This and talk about this moment. Like this is a pivotal moment, right? Oh my gosh. I love it. The steaming at the spa was great, but I had a problem. The problem was that they were talking to me while I was steaming. And like everything that they were saying also wasn't like, it wasn't all like fun topics like they were like <laughs> i don't know they were a little yeah. bit racist too because they, like, <laughs> they were like uh american women don't steam you guys like to be dirty you know like they were saying things like that you know which is like i understand that you know we're using broken english and they were just trying to communicate a concept and we were cool we were cool with but each it, other. but it, know, like, from but what i'm hearing is that you were like i need it i need to build a company that incorporates vaginal steaming and privacy. And I'm going to joke here, but you know, you have like the gut brain connection. There's probably a yoni brain connection where you need to be in a peaceful, calm relaxation. I mean, if I get into a sauna of any kind, I don't want anybody chatting me up. So, or getting a massage or anything, you know, this sounds really relaxing. And so, yes, I totally get it. Right. Well, so I was doing it after my period and it never occurred to me. No, it never occurred to me to build a business and it never occurred to me to tell anybody. I think I tried to tell like a boyfriend and then he was like, you what? And then I was like, no, nothing. Um, <laughs> so what are we doing? Like, I was just like completely changed <laughs> the topic because I was just, scared. I don't know. Like I, it was just, it was so private. Like to me, it was just something that was so private and it was never something that I intended on sharing with the world. Well, Kelly, so- you're not going to believe this, right? <laughs> but like 99% <laughs> of people listening to this podcast right now are thinking, I I don't know what this is. I've never done it. And this seems like a kind of like a private thing. So anything that we speak out about and we share and we spread the good news about, you know, it starts with one. And (laughs) at least in my world over here, Kelly, you're you're the one, you know, you're the first one. And so I think this is amazing coming forward and now like having this huge business and talking about it. There's so much curiosity. And so... You know, then what happens? You you screw this toilet seat on top of a chair <laughs> and you start doing this at home. And then you said, you know, fast forward, now you're pregnant and you're in this mom's group and you find out other women are doing this. So is this the first time you started to share about it in that group? Well, it was the first time I heard other people talking about it since that original meeting where I had learned about it from Marcia Lopez. So I, I gleaned that that I could use it for postpartum. So I was like, okay, let's get the good old vaginal steam sun out. So I got it out and I started the steam postpartum. And at that point, other people around me were like, um, hi, Kelly, cute baby. What's that chair over there? <laughs> like, is this a, t- a potty? Like, they were like, you know, everybody who came to, to meet me and the ba- or to meet the baby was asking about the steam chair in the, in the corner. And I was like, ignore that chair in the corner and stop asking me about it. You know, like, I was just like, it's none of your business. Like, don't worry about it. So I I also wasn't necessarily trying to share about it with anybody, but one of my friends in particular was like, you got to ask Kelly about her witch chair. And she started to spread it around to my friends. And so more and more people started to ask me about it. And I did start to share at that point. So then when you fast forward, I was about, I was six months postpartum. And one of my friends was crying to me about her terrible, terrible period. And they were really long and they were really clotted and all these problems. And so the clotting kind of, you know, piqued my interest. And I thought, well, I don't know if, you know, I don't know about the rest of that, but like that clotting, like, you know, steaming could help that because it could help with the circulation and help get those clots out. And so I recommended it to her and she was like, okay, look, I'll try it, but I just don't want to make a chair (laughs) the way that I was describing it to her. She's like, can you just make one for me? Here's a hundred dollars. And I was like, okay. So I took her money and I made her a vaginal steam chair and believe it or not, she steamed three times in a row and her period came and her 10 day long periods had went down to five days and her heavy bleeding went to mild bleeding. And the clots, she actually had more clots clear out, but then the clots went away 
and she had just a clean period. So she had an incredibly different period after just doing those three steam sessions with my vaginal steam chair. So the next week, three of her friends contact me and each one of them wanted to buy a vaginal steam chair from me. And I was like, you can just use hers. And they were like, no, no, thank you. You know, that's Versus what I, I would have been like, now it's $150 <laughs> right, right. and I'll take it so, from you and from you and from you. And so that's what happened basically. Then their friends contacted me. <laughs> and so it was people that I didn't know at this point contacting me and offering me money to make them vaginal steam saunas. And it was all based on the testimonials of the people that were using them. And so with everybody, I, I would ask them, so I would make them the sauna, but I would also ask them what their period was like. And then after their next period, I would ask what their post steam period was like. And so I worked with over 700 women like this, where I would write down their, their beginning period and then their post steam period. And even like even the cycles that happen after that as well. And so what I started to see was how periods were changing as a result of steaming. And that's ultimately why I'm steamy chick is because I <laughs> started selling these vaginal steam chairs, which turned into vaginal steam saunas. And I was the only person that sold those in the United States at the time. And there ended up being a pretty big need for it as women were contacting me from everywhere who had period problems. And the you know, vaginal steaming was appearing to, to be helpful and beneficial for people solving, resolving these, these issues. And so my company has actually been uh, demand driven since the beginning. I, I had never, I didn't have a website. I didn't have a name. I didn't decide to sell vaginal steam chairs, but early on, one of the friends of the friends who got one of my first vaginal steam chairs contacted me and said, I did it. And it was so great. And this is how my period changed. And, you know, so I took down those notes and then she said, and can I write a blog about it? And I was like, I'm pretty sure nobody reads blogs. I, I mean, I was very wrong, but I didn't think anybody <laughs> would read it. So I was like, yeah, sure. No problem. So she writes this blog and that blog went viral. So then I went from, you know, selling steam chairs, you know, to friends of friends to selling it to and shipping them across the nation. And so this was all pre-2015. 2015 was a really big landmark for vaginal steaming because that's when Gwyneth Paltrow mentioned it. So, uh, oh, with Gwyneth, okay. Yeah. So anyway, so I was the only person selling vaginal steam chairs. And then with that, I was doing the herbs. But with the herbs, I, I would work with my colleague and friend who was an acupuncturist, Chris Gonzalez. And I would say, okay, what categories of herbs do you think they need? And so we would create and we would consult with each other and we would create herbal blends with the properties that the person needed. So, you know, I don't know if you know, but acupuncturists can actually do a diagnosis by reading the period. So I would share what their period was like with Chris. She could already diagnose what their in imbalances are and also what herbal properties that they need. And so that's where, you know, we brought in the intelligence and being able to tailor the herbs to the different menstrual cycle types. I, was, I worked with over 700 women and I was able to see that there were four different like herbal properties that you would want based on the different menstrual cycles in order to get the desired effect, you know, which is a, basically a pain-free period without any side effects. So walk us through those four main categories. So I named them um, the cleansing blend. So this blend has the, the most circulatory herbs that are going to be... So steam itself helps to improve circulation. But then this blend has like even stronger herbs that are amenagogues, which means that they're going to be uterine cleansers. So this is the strongest blend to be able to clean somebody's... Clean out old residue or old menses that's in somebody's uterus. The second blend is going to be the gentle... What I call the gentle herbs... So the gentle herbs, it turns out that not everybody can handle steaming or not everybody can handle steaming for a long time and not everybody can handle strong herbs. There are some people who have fresh spotting throughout their cycles and some people who have short menstrual cycles, like 20 days, you know, 23 days, um, even, and it could be shorter. Uh, but I consider anything 27 days or shorter, a short menstrual cycle, which doesn't mean that there's a problem. It just means that this person needs herbs that help to extend the cycle rather than shorten it. The cleansing blend, you know, is going to be best for people with missing periods that would bring back the period or people who have long menstrual cycles, like 40 days long. That cleansing blend is going to help to shorten the menstrual cycle. Whereas the gentle herbs, you need the exact opposite. You need herbs that are going to help to extend the menstrual cycle 
And those herbal properties are going to be herbs that are anti-hemorrhagic, that stop bleeding, and that have chi tonics in them. And you, uh, that will strengthen the uterus so that it stays longer before actually initiating that period again. All of these things make sense to me. If anyone's listening and you want to kind of follow along with what we're going through, um, this is a great opportunity if you're near a computer to go on steamychick.com forward slash herbs. So if anybody mm-hmm. just wants to kind of just if you're not driving your car on your way to work right now or on your way home from work and you have a computer, then jump on steamychick.com forward slash herbs as Kelly walks through the next two. Very sweet. Yes. Okay. So then, um, so those are like the main two things that we're really, that I'm really looking for when I'm screening somebody to see what kinds of herbs that they need. But the third category are people who have infections. And so I'm using infections really broadly here to mean bacterial infections, yeast infections, as well as viruses. Okay. Okay. And what you would you consider, that, um, I'm going to interrupt really quick. Would you consider GBS colonization under this category? Yes. Okay. Yes, I, so I wanted to put like some stronger disinfecting herbs in there. So all of my herbs actually have some disinfecting properties all of my herbal blends, but the disinfecting herbal blend has the strongest antivirals in there, antivirals, antifungals, and antibacterials. But remember how I told you I steamed with white sage all those years? Mm -hmm. White sage is really interesting because white sage is an antimicrobial. It hits all of those. It's antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal. And then it's also an aminagog. It's also a uterine cleanser. So it's good for circulation. So it was interesting that I had chosen that one herb because that one herb kind of does it all. (laughs) And then the fourth blend was I wanted to develop a blend for people who have a lot of heat in their body. This is like the symptoms that you can see would be like hot flashes and night sweats. And we associate it with women who are menopausal. Although you have women in there who are teenagers who have hot flashes and night sweats as well as postpartum. Nursing moms often have it. So, you know, it can happen at any time, but we associate it with menopause the most. But I wanted to create a blend specifically for women who do have the signs of this excess heat in their body. And so I created a cooling blend. I love this. And I'm going to jump in right here because as you're talking, I'm like, this is the one I need is the (laughs) cooling herbs. I am 41 years old and mm-hmm. and I'm postpartum because I had babies late. And mm-hmm. so all I have a lot of heat, a lot of it. Yeah. But one of the things that you say at the very bottom, like how would someone know that, right? Bes- if you weren't having hot flashes and different things, but sometimes, um, and I'm just taking the liberty right now to talk about my own experience, but there's a lot mm-hmm. of vaginal dryness with intercourse. And so I would imagine that that has something to do with this because in, in your description, it says like vaginal dryness. And so I'm like, yeah. oh, to get check, hot flashes, check, night sweats, check. So anyway, <laughs> so I will be ordering some cooling herbs when we hang up and when we get to like what chair is the right chair too. Yeah. Okay. So those are the four main herb steams that you have. And so because people are listening to the birth story podcast or are likely pregnant or trying to get pregnant, I want to kind of get your advice or expertise on a couple of things that come to mind. And the first one is what we talked about with GBS colonization. Like most of my moms don't want to take antibiotics because they are colonized with group beta strep. And so we had just talked about the product that you would recommend if someone is either GBS positive or if you're in your second trimester and leading up to that, moving into the third trimester and leading up to that 36-week appointment where they usually kind of swab the vagina and rectum, have mm-hmm. you? is this where you would recommend maybe starting steaming with the disinfecting herbs? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've, I actually, I was recently talking to um, midwife Raquel Lemus about that and also midwife Piper Lovemore. And Piper in particular brought it up with me and wanted to to figure out if steaming could help with this, if somebody's GBS positive. And Raquel and I actually, we kind of came up with a protocol, but here's the thing. We don't have any information about 
I think that yes. like this may be a good point of disclosure, right? Like I'm a doula. Kelly is a vaginal steamer. Neither of us have MD next to our name and we're fine with that, right? Like we're yes. talking about ancient practices that have been passed down to us from generation after generation after generation. Some of these things have been lost and then we're bringing them back. Like your friend that, you know, works in Mayan abdominal womb healing and care. Like these are things that in some cultures have been preserved and in ours, they were not preserved. And so it's okay that we're not like on my show, it's okay right now that we're not talking about like, oh, there was a trial at the University of California (laughs) Davis on you know, I'm just saying we we don't have a lot of tools in our toolbox, right? Like moms come to me and they're pregnant and they're like, is there anything I can do? And the only thing I can think of is wash your vagina with Hibiclins, which is like an antibacterial <laughs> soap. And so, yeah. you know, here's one more tool for your toolbox. If you're pregnant, yeah. you know, can we prove that this may work? No, but can we, it may like, why not? It feels great. Yeah. It's disinfecting herbs. It's going to do all of these other things. So, you know, I'm on here as a doula saying, try it for sure. Right, right, yeah, so GBS yeah. is... Um, I'm going to go for the cooling herbal blend. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go for the cooling herbal blend, which also has disinfectants in it. Okay. But what happens is you want to use moisturizing herbs in order to help for labor prep. And also use it for the the GBS. But here's the thing. You don't... So there shouldn't be any steaming prior to 37 weeks. Okay. That was was a huge question that I had. The thing about steaming, it doesn't cause somebody... We haven't seen any cases where somebody like immediately goes into labor when steaming. But steaming does help to assist the body to get ready for labor. When you think about what the steam does... It moisturizes the area, lubricates the area, and it helps to open and ripen the cervix. So it's not something that should ever be done up until, it shouldn't be done before 37 weeks. It's okay. recommended to start using it for, for steaming and getting ready at 38 weeks. Now, the idea at starting it a couple of weeks earlier than you know what's considered full term, 40 weeks, is that you never want to force the body into labor. If you're doing something to force the body into labor, you can force the body into labor, but it often comes with side effects. You know, like a lot of times everything doesn't line up. Where steaming can very gently, doing mild steam from, you know, 38 weeks for every day. I recommend like 10 minute steam sessions. I recommend water only unless you were trying to address the GBS. But you, those mild steams can, it just helps the, the cervix and the body to get ready. And it helps to introduce that circulation which is what's useful for bringing contraction. But as far as GBS goes, the only the only herbs I recommend prior to pregnancy when doing labor prep is going to be the cooling blend or using water only. And if somebody does have GBS, I, I do recommend the cooling blend. And I think that if they start steaming at 37 weeks or 38 weeks using the cooling blend, and I think if we looked at 20 cases of this or 100 cases of this, I think that we might find that the vaginal steaming is successful at getting rid of that. And so I think we were talking about, I have to go through the specifics. Raquel and I created a specific steam plan, a GBS positive steam plan. And um, we have that in my course, Vaginal Steaming for Labor Prep. And Raquel actually walks the practitioners through um, how to use the steaming and what the protocol should be in the case of being GBS positive. But I think people that are midwives that are familiar with steaming um, definitely do feel comfortable with using steaming as opposed to the antibiotic. Now we're going to take a short break to just share a few things with you. Thanks for listening to the Birth Story podcast. I am so excited to announce the launch of my book, Birth Story, a 42-week guide for your pregnancy, a collection of these birth stories, a ton of doula advice, and journaling prompts. You can order a copy today at birthstory.com. It also will mean the world to me if you'll spread the word about this podcast. So on Stitcher or on iTunes, just leave a review. Thanks. Tell me, where does one find the information on the vaginal steaming for labor prep? So there's two ways. Number one is that if this is somebody who's looking for 
to do this, I think it's really important to work with a practitioner who's trained in this. So on my website, I have a vaginal steam directory of all of the steamatrix practitioners that I've trained and who have gone through the labor prep module and who can and who can work with a client. And they don't have to work with you in person, but they work with, you know, the different things that are going on. Because, you know, there's like a lot of different variables going on <laughs> with labor and with different people and what their healthcare providers, you know, like what they're, you know, with induction pressure. And there's just a lot of different situations going on. So my practitioners have been trained in all of the safety for steaming for labor prep. So that's the best way to go for somebody who's looking to do this for their own, for their own pregnancy. This is a time when it's, it's best to have somebody who's been trained in this area. And then for, pre- for birth workers who want to learn this training, I recommend you have to do the prerequisite, which is the vaginal steam facilitator course. That way, you know, I can make sure that all of my practitioners know the differences between the different herbs, how to mix them and how to screen clients. And then they can do the vaginal steam facilitator certification and then skip forward and take that labor prep course for people who are interested in this. This is awesome. And on your website, when you go to like the geographic map with all of your trained practitioners, I mean, it's all over the whole world that you've trained yeah. practitioners. So no matter where you are in this world listening to this podcast, please, if you go to steamychick.com and then forward slash practitioners, I'll link to all of this in the show notes. So you can, you know, click to your geographic area or somewhere close and see a directory of those that Kelly has trained to help you through, you know, not just your labor prep, but anyone who's listening that might have been struggling and they may be in between children right now and are struggling with different things like irregular periods or heavy periods and, you know, all the different things that we run into as women. And so, Kelly, I want to take a turn really quick. We probably should have done this at the very beginning, but, you know, you're just fun to talk to. So we just were chatting. But I want to just go like in more of a concise manner, go through like what is steam, right? Like it comes to mind to me that like steam is something that we use to clean things, right? But I wanted you to just mainly go through like the main benefits of steam. We've highlighted it here and there and here and there, but really for the audience that's listening, the quick bullet points on, you know, why vaginal steaming or what what steaming is and why it's good for our bodies. Okay. Yeah. So vaginal steaming is when you would take a pot of water and you would heat it up and you would get, you know, heat it to the point that it's steaming. And then you can also add herbs for the treatment. And then what happens with this pot of herbs with steaming herbs is that the woman can put it on the ground and then squat over it or, or put it in a sauna with a special seat in order to be able to sit over it. So this is what a vaginal steam is talking about. And so the steam directly goes up and it touches the entire perennial area. So it's going to touch the vagina. It it can touch the anus as well. Um, It touches the labia. It touches the clitoris. Right. So the steam ends up targeting that whole area. And you just sit there and relax. (laughs) and It feels nice. And you do your your vaginal steam. Um, There's two different steam sessions you could do. I recommend uh, the mild is 10 minutes. I recommend that for beginners. And then another way to do it is where there's actually a burner under the pot and that burner can be put on low, which helps to extend the steam to do a longer steam session. Um, I call that an advanced steam session, what is, which is 30 minutes, okay? So this is what vaginal steaming is. It's been done all around the world by women. Since the beginning of time, the earliest books that we can find about women's medicine and gynecology include information about vaginal steaming in them. Okay. So that's what vaginal steaming is. And wait, what else are we talking about? Oh, why is it beneficial? So again, it hasn't been studied in the West by Western medicine, but when you look at the benefits that women are reporting from vaginal steaming, it appears that the vaginal steam is useful at increasing circulation and circulation is really beneficial when there's pain. Pain is often Um, a sign that there's like some type of stagnation. And so just increasing the circulation can often move whatever is stuck and cause somebody to not have pain where they did have pain before, okay? Another thing that happens with the steam is that when people steam 
people don't steam on, on their period or when they're actively bleeding. But what happens is when people steam, then when their period comes, their period looks a lot cleaner, fresher, and redder. Okay. And so the vagina, and you'll hear people say that the vagina and the uterus um, are self cleansing. And that's absolutely true. But there are cases when there is old residue buildup. Okay. And so signs of old residue, you can see them during the period. There's going to be brown blood, clots, cramps. Those are all signs that there's old residue that's actually stuck in the uterus. So what happens when people steam is they'll steam prior to their period. And then when their period comes, usually there's a bigger cleanse. There's like more clots and more brown blood, (laughs) you know? And then past that, you get to this fresh red clean blood, okay? So we don't actually have a standard for what a healthy period is. What we have are, um, when you look at gynecology, descriptions of what normal is. But when people steam, after the 700 women that I steamed with, I was really surprised to notice that people's periods tended to all look the same. Like a healthy period that was pain-free was this fresh red period with that didn't have clots or cramps or, or brown blood in it. So that's kind of like one of the learnings, one of the, one of the things that, that I've learned through looking at all of these different periods before and after. And then for postpartum, uh, vaginal steaming, people have reported benefits with it for, um, for prolapse. They've reported benefits for um, if, they've had, if they have painful sex, clearing out the lochia, helping to reduce bloating, and then also helping uh, stitches to heal and not having you know, some of the uh, discomfort around stitches, basically helping the mom recover, ha- helping the mom like recover and be comfortable <laughs> overall. <laughs> it seems like uh, when people steam that they are able to recover quicker than people who do not steam. I wish I could go back in time to after delivering my 10 and a half pound baby and oh done some vaginal steaming with some cooling herbs. I feel like this lessons learned. So if anyone's listening, I really hope that you're going to go to steamychick.com and just learn. And f- first of all, follow you on Instagram. You have a beautiful Instagram. It's very informative. But also go to the shop, the store, and just kind of look at all of these different things, which leads me to because I said at the end of this, like, I want to buy this for my house. But there's so many options that let's just play a game. Like if I'm coming to you and you're my practitioner, and I already shared with you, right? I'm 41. I had babies late. I am in perimenopause. I was in perimenopause since I was about 32 years old. And then somehow had babies and then just stayed in perimenopause. A lot of vaginal dryness. You know, the doctors want to say like low estrogen and put you on estrogen cream, which I've never done. So if I'm coming to you and I and my cycle is every uh, 27 days, um, it used okay. to be a little bit longer before kids. It was about 29 days. And now it's more 26 to 27 days. So my cervical mucus happens six days after I finish my period. My period is very light spotting, not heavy at all. No, I don't experience any cramps or uncomfort. And oftentimes from my 30s on, I would just shed the lining of my uterus a little bit, but they were proving through blood work and ultrasounds that I wasn't actually ovulating very much. So I don't, I still don't think I am, I can't, still can't tell if I'm ovulating. So if I was talking to you and this was my, we're going through this questionnaire, what would be my prescription from the steamy okay. chick store and which yeah. chair? There's so many. And let me just explain to everyone because Kelly said she like drilled a toilet seat on top of a chair. <laughs> These chairs are beautiful. They almost look yeah. like boxes. I mean, they're beautiful. It's worth just going on the website just to look. And so I wanted to ask, do I pick one by style or by design or is it just, you know, what I think would look beautiful in my house? Yeah, that's basically how women really shop. Like okay. really, that's how women shop. <laughs> <laughs> so the saunas have gotten more and more beautiful over time because women want beautiful saunas. I would also look at what's going to be convenient for you. So like, for example, there's that Atlanta traveling sauna. Like if you were going to do it with clients as well, that's one that's like popular with birth workers. 
because the legs um, can unscrew and then you can just throw it in like a backpack. You know, if you want, I like ones with the most like booty coverage possible because, you know, I got big hips. So (laughs) I do think booty coverage is important. And then the ones with, uh, what do you call it? The cushions. I mean, the cushions are the absolute most comfortable if you have a cushion. So you just got to look at, and then, and then you got to shop based on, you know, what, what looks good to you too. (laughs) Yeah. Well, they're so Um, beautiful. Do you make these or do you have different designers that now make them for you? Yeah. These are all third party sauna vendors who are actually advertising them on my website. I stopped making saunas and I focused, I realized, you know, any, probably anybody could make, uh, or sorry, there were people who could specialize in making saunas. But the the information that I had learned from looking at all these different menstrual cycles and the herbs, that was something that, you know, I was getting a lot of questions about. And so I, I turned my focus to actually working on certifying and training other practitioners with this information. But yeah, so then I started to, I just reached out to a couple of people I knew who made saunas and I listed them on my website and then I've continued to do so. So this is where you could find the majority of the vaginal steam saunas. Sometimes there's some on like Pinterest and Etsy as well. But yeah, you just have to choose whichever one looks good to you, really. Now, how (laughs) many women do more than one type of steam? Like, I think we already established my prescription might be the cooling herbs. But do you also recommend doing at one point during the month doing, you know, maybe the disinfecting and then later doing the cooling? Or do you typically just prescribe one type of herbal blend for steaming, you know, per client? Well, it could vary, but um, like postpartum, it tends to vary quite a bit. But with you, I want to know how, how long ago did you have your last baby? Like how, how far postpartum are you? Well, I feel like it was yesterday, but he's technically four (laughs) years old. (laughs) He's four? Okay. Four years old. And they were 15 months apart. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So it's been four years. And then you said that your period is, you said it's kind of like spotting and not heavy at all. Uh, yes. I wanted to know what, what colors you see. Do you see any pink? Do you see any orange? Is it brown or is it all red? Is it dark purple? What what are, what colors are you seeing? I would say more like dark purple would be an accurate description and maybe okay. some, you know, just red to dark purple. Okay. Okay, cool. And that you, you bleed for four days or it's three days, two days? Uh, three days three days and it's mostly just spotting. It's not like a consistent flow. Yeah. It's just spotting here or there. Okay, cool. All right. So let me tell you what I, um... (laughs) everyone knows everything about me now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, not yet, but now they will. I'm just kidding. Um, So what I'm seeing is that you have, so there's seven menstrual cycle imbalances that you can determine from looking at the period. So you're showing me that you have uterine fatigue. So your periods come a little bit early because your uterus is tired. Okay. So (laughs) uteruses get tired for the same reason that the rest of our bodies get tired. Like you're just tired. Okay. (laughs) So like when you're not tired, then your uterus isn't tired. Okay. So your uterus is showing some signs of fatigue, which means that instead of waiting until like 29 days or 28 days, Several days earlier, your uterus is like, nah, I'm tired. I'm just giving up like the uterine vessels open and just like start the period. Just because your uterus got tired, it let go of the period to like early, earlier than it, than it should, basically. This feels um, so right. And it feels so sad. <laughs> my, my, well, my yoni is tired. <laughs> well, I mean, no, you got two kids. <laughs> you are a birth worker. I don't know a birth worker who doesn't have uterine fatigue. Like you guys are, you know, running around, first of all, taking care of your own family. And then in all of your spare time, like running to assist women when they're in labor. I mean, you know, birth workers are pretty much angels. We don't so sleep. Yes, we don't sleep. <laughs> I consider uterine fatigue like the imbalance that angels get because I really find that the women who are doing the most around this usually have signs of uterine fatigue. So anyways, if that makes you feel any better. That does. <laughs> Thank you for calling yeah. me an angel. Of course. Okay. So then the other thing that I'm getting is that you, you don't have, or that I'm looking at is that you don't have very much blood. And so what a healthy period, and again, these are my definitions of a healthy period. A healthy period usually has four days of fresh red blood that is consistent flow. Okay. Not heavy, not too light. 
So you, you're, you're kind of getting spotting here and there. What that means is that your body doesn't, isn't able to create a lot of blood, which means that you're probably blood deficient. So in other words, your body doesn't have a lot of nutrients to create blood. And if the body will often do that because of fatigue or because of poor digestion or because you're not getting enough you know, protein or, or like vegetables or, or whatever. Like, so, um, so you're showing some signs of blood deficiency and then you are, is this too much? Should no, this- I'm like, this is very <laughs> interesting. You nailed it. Probably core digestion. I have celiac disease and I am uh, a terrible, like I had a cupcake today. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm a terrible I'm a terrible eater and there's Wait. gluten all in my diet. So this is probably linked right. back to that. Wow, it's very interesting. I'm blood deficient. Okay, wait, there's one very important follow-up question. Okay. <laughs> what kind of cupcake was it? Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> it was a really great cupcake store from Gigi's Cupcakes and it was a strawberry cupcake with yeah. strawberry icing. It was really good. Okay. Very sweet. So, okay. So no, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not really like, I'm not like a food Nazi or anything, but what happens with women is that we tend to get blood deficient naturally. And the reason why we do is because we bleed every month. And so unless you properly replenish the blood that you lose during the menstruation, you're going to end up blood deficient. Like that's just a very common thing that women are, are walking around with. Like you see, when you see like blood deficiency is like the imbalance that correlates to anemia. And we know that so many women are anemic, right? Like that's like a, a girly thing to say, anemia, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's basically why women have it. So part of that has to do with when you have your period, it's really important to eat nourishing food at that time. You can have your cupcake too, but you also want to have like some hard boiled eggs, some chicken soup. Um, for the vegans, they want to have a spirulina, you know? And, and so, you know, you, you want to have your, your blood tonics at that time. Blood tonics are the, the foods that help to nourish the blood. So chicken soup is the best example of that or hard boiled egg, you know, like, (laughs) so learning how to eat like that during your period is something that helps to, like, it kind of immediately starts to stop that trend of that blood deficiency and starts to nourish that blood again. You got to think you you have to replenish what's lost because the body has to create blood at that time, you know? Yeah. I feel like like, I just went to therapy. (laughs) (laughs) And then... With mamas, mamas in the, especially um, moms who nurse. So any mom who creates a baby, you know, during pregnancy ends up most likely blood deficient at the end of it because we use all of our nutrients to create our children. And so that's why you see like certain cultures and like, so not even cultures, I would say historically um, postpartum women were well cared for and there were specific foods for them to eat and, and nourishment was really important at that time in order to replenish those, those nutrients that were lost during the pregnancy. And then next thing, when, when moms are nursing, then their nutrients are going towards that breast milk production. So moms need higher nutrients at that time too. And so what you have is it's pretty common for somebody who's, you know, had children who didn't necessarily focus on nourishing the blood afterwards. It's pretty common to have a little bit of um, blood deficiency and you don't have a lot. You just have a little. So Very interesting. Okay. So I'm going to focus on sleeping and nourishing foods during my period and getting the gluten out of my diet. And I'm going to start my vaginal steaming. Yes, I'm so okay. excited. So then there's two more things. Okay. More okay. So this is sure really you- thorough. Okay. I know you can learn so much by knowing so little about somebody's period. <laughs> okay. So you also do have that sign of the excess heat, which you mentioned, and then you also have some signs of stagnation. So like, you know, more circulation is necessary. So anyways, from that, I am going to recommend the cooling herbs and the gentle herbs, and I'm going to recommend that you rotate them. So every other steam session you would do, you would do gentle this time that you would do cooling next. And what I'm going to recommend for you are doing the mild steam session. Since you have that heat, we don't want you steaming too long. You just do a little mild steam session. You don't need to put a burner under it. Just do 10 minutes mild steam session. What would be good for you would be to steam three times after your period and then steam three times before your next period. This is awesome. Thank you, Kelly. (laughs) I hope there's somebody listening that's like got a similar, you know, that I'm like, is this your prescription too? 
because then it will make it easy for everyone now. At least I hope that this episode has made it easy for everyone to understand like what is vaginal steaming? Like why are we doing it? And then breaking down those four different herb blends that you specialize in so that they can kind of say, okay, here is my steaming chair I'm going to purchase. And then here is the herbal blend that I think best fits. But like you said, I'm going to definitely, we're going to steer everyone to your website though, to get a, a, a certified practitioner so that they could go through what what Kelly just went through with me. So going through that questionnaire, I'm assuming it's probably a little bit more like in in depth when you have, you know, an hour on the phone versus we did it in 10 minutes. That was pretty good. But making sure that everyone has your licensed or certified practitioner through Steamy Chick to be able to direct you to getting the right products. So yeah. Sure. And so the the practitioner consultations, usually they will do them online or through email and they run about $120 and they come with, you know, again, that was like a little 10 minute version, but they usually last one to two hours of really going through all of the different signs and what they might mean and then having specific recommendations with each one. So I just let you know your steam plan real quick, but there, there are additional things that you know, during this consultation, I would be able to to let you know that you that you could help with, like for example, the blood deficiency and the excess heat. Basically, like a really good meal for you would be so with the excess heat, you want cooling foods. So a really good meal for you would be like a protein salad because it's going to be cooling, but it's going to have that blood tonic in there for you, like the meat. You know, so yeah, so it's going to be all that thorough information. And for people who that is above their price range, uh, it's definitely worth it because it changes your period forever and it makes it healthy or whatever postpartum symptoms somebody has, or at least it, it could, it's possible that it could. And a lot of people are experiencing, experiencing those benefits. But if you want to, you can also try on my website, there's a do it yourself tutorial where I just kind of try to do questions and answers and give general information. And a lot of times people are able to use the do it yourself tutorial to create their own steam plans as well. Do they use their benefits. facial steamer? <laughs> Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> so I have like a music guide with like how to do a setup at home, even if you don't have a sauna, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah. Well, Kelly, this has been so eye-opening, so informative. I just like, I I honestly can't wait to like go back to my Instagram and be like, you guys have to know all of these things. Um, <laughs> I hope this is the most listened to episode on the Birth Story podcast whenever it shall air. And so this has been really good. And I usually ask everybody like, what's your favorite baby product as a way to conclude? And so um, I don't know if this would be considered your favorite baby product, but I thought I would give you the opportunity since you're a mom of two to chime in Kelly and tell everybody if you have a favorite pregnancy or baby product aside from vaginal steaming that you want to share with the world. (sighs) Okay. I really like herbs. I really like herbs for right after the postpartum nourishing the mama. So I would say like a nice chicken soup and then um, some like nettles tea. Like those are like my favorites and I try to get those to my friends when they give birth um, because those are going to be nourishing that blood and replenishing the mama and helping her with that breast milk at that time. So it's all homemade stuff. It's not necessarily a product, but those are those are what I'm trying to trying to get to the mom. Well, Kelly, thank you so much. It was really, this was just, I mean, where have I been living in a cave as a doula for 15 years? I'm just so thankful for laying in bed with my best friend in Austin, Texas, and learning about vaginal steaming so that we could connect. And um, how does everybody find you? I mean, I think I I put everybody to the website, but why don't you give us your handle on Instagram and the best way to connect with you? Sure. On Instagram, I am at Steamy Chick and the website is steamychick.com. Okay, wait, but Heidi, I'm just worried that you're going to get mad at me for not telling you about this, you know, and your friend (laughs) is going to tell you and you're going to be like, how did Kelly not tell me? But we, um, last year I, uh, sponsored a, a steam study called the fourth trimester vaginal steam study. So I very specifically for all the birth workers, you guys should check that out and read up on it. And what we did was we looked at a group of women who steamed postpartum and a group of women who didn't steam postpartum. And we had a midwife facilitate all of the vaginal steam sessions so that they were all the same. And then we looked at 
several different postpartum indicators to see, and we measured them before and after to see what the difference was. And the results were incredible. So can I get a copy of this study? <laughs> yes. So if you go to steamychick.com, mm-hmm. I'm just all right down on the homepage, you will see the fourth trimester vaginal steam study. There's a copy of the study. The PDF can be downloaded. There's a PowerPoint presentation of the study. There's a talk about the study. All of the information is available. And not only that, this was just a, a home done study by me and three of my friends, <laughs> you know, I mean, professionals. But so getting the word out there about it, learning about it, reading it and getting the word out there is really, really great because this, this is, it's just a trial study because it was so few women in the study. We had 12 entire, entirely, but this was the first study done in the United States and it was just homegrown. It was just done by us, you know? So I'm so proud of you. Us. Look at you. You do have data. I'm talking about eating my placenta earlier and you're like, (laughs) there is data and you look at, I mean, everything that you are, Kelly, you're amazing. You're like, oh, there's not a study. So I'm going to do one. You're like, there, I had, oh, this, this company of yours is incredible. I love your entrepreneur, like mind. I mean, I hope a million people listen to my podcast so that a million people buy your products. And this is amazing. I can't wait to... So if you do another study, will you let me be in it? Yeah. I volunteer. I'm in. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. So, well, thank you so much. I appreciate everything. And I am, I'm going to sign off now so I can go steam. Yay. Thank you so much, Heidi, for having me on. It was such a pleasure. Thank you for listening to Birth Story. My goal is you will walk away from each episode with a clear picture of how labor and delivery might go and that you will feel empowered by the end of your pregnancy to speak up, plan and prepare for the birth you want, no matter what that looks like.